Tune in Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the Your Body is Your Pharmacy radio show. Hear from the doctors that were among the first in the U.S. to merge the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda and natural medicines with the advances of modern medical science. Listen to pioneer doctors Varender Sodi, Shalender, and Anju Sodi to keep up with some of the latest medical advances and learn from some of the true leaders of Ayurvedic medicines every Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. with the Your Body is Your Pharmacy radio show on Day C1250 AM, radio that listens to you. Hi folks, this is Dr. Vrinder Suri. Today for Your Body is Your Natural Pharmacy. Actually, Your Body is Your Natural Pharmacy. We make every drug on demand. What we need to do to create that response in us, we need to listen to our body. We need to get plenty rest to it. We have to eat healthier. What the Mother Nature provides. Sometimes, you know, I see patients, they bring bags of these health food supplements and cookies and candies and thinking it's natural because there's written natural on it, but that may not be natural. What is a good food? The good food is what Mother Nature has provided to us, with the vegetables, the fruits, the whole grains, uh, not the sweetened one. You know, Mother Nature did not make sweetened food. It made, didn't make sugar candies. Didn't make a, you don't see sugar candies hanging on the trees. So your body is a natural pharmacy. You help it heal, and today's topic is high blood pressure. High blood pressure is one of the main reasons why many patients see a doctor's office today. And actually the number of visits is number one with hypertension in doctor's office. So you can see it's a very prevalent problem. And another problem with blood pressure is that it is painless. So people don't have any pain associated with high blood pressure, so they don't even notice it. And they may be ignoring the symptoms they have, mild symptoms they have. And right now, around 30% of the American population is having high blood pressure. That is an astonishing number. That means 65 million Americans have high blood pressure. And as we age, the blood pressure goes on going up. For example, by the age 55, which already I crossed, I'm 59 now, 50% of people have high blood pressure. And uh, I'm very happy to report I don't. But what is the difference? What I'm doing to help that process? By the age 60, which I'm going to be touching next year, 60% of the people will have high blood pressure. And by the age 70, 70% 70 people will have high blood pressure. So you can see as the age progresses, the blood pressure keeps going up. And you can ask, what is happening? What is the reason? What we are doing wrong, that my blood pressure is keeping up, up, and up. As the age progresses, your blood pressure is going up and up. What happens is, as we age, our body is less flexible. You know, you might have seen, as a young kid, as a newborn kid is born, you know, you might have seen you doing some specific yoga postures. He can touch his toes, he can, you know, uh, grab his uh, uh, back and do all those kind of flexible poses. And in our age, even in younger kids, I see a lot of stiffness there too. So as we, as we go, we are getting more stiffer as we age. And also the blood vessels which supply the blood to our system also getting stiffer. So what happens is you have now more pressure on the blood vessels wall. And that's why the blood pressure is going up. So what is the blood pressure? You know, if you can ask me this question, what is the blood pressure? So blood pressure is the heart is beating, and when the heart beats, it contracts, and it has all the blood vessels all over the body, which is supplying, and there's a certain amount of pressure applied to the blood vessels. And that is called systolic blood pressure. So when blood is, sorry, the heart is squeezing, you're getting a systolic blood pressure. And when the heart is relaxing, you're getting a diastolic. So whenever you go to a doctor's office, the doctor gives you two readings. It says, okay, your blood pressure is 120, 80, which is the highest normal limit. So that means you're doing good. But if the numbers are start to creep up, we call it a pre-hypertensive stage, where the numbers go beyond 120, and it's going up to 150, 
and the systolic number, the first number, and the second number going up to 90. So when this number goes into above 150 over 90, we call it the hypertensive. But before that number, we call them pre-hypertensive. So you can see, you know, there is a there is a, some science to it, and uh, uh, the more the number higher number, the more problematic it is. So basically, your, your doctor can measure the blood pressure in the office uh, with a cuff. You know, you might have seen that when you go to doctor's office, he puts a cuff on your arm, and, it, and then you inflate the cuff, and uh, uh, it like it feels like a pressure. Basically, what we're doing, we are putting a pressure and the blood vessels are sensing that pressure. And when the blood pressure uh, is equal to the pressure of that uh, uh, pressure, which is external pressure, we start to hear some sound with it. And then it drops, 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 and it finishes, and the end of the sound is the diastolic. So the starting of the sound is systolic, and the end of the sound is diastolic. So that is, you know, uh, how the blood pressure is measured. And uh, so I want to talk to you about another thing, which is very common, and uh, you guys can call me at one eight four four three zero one one two five zero. This is a toll free number. You can call from anywhere, and uh, you can ask me questions regarding hypertension or anything you have in your mind. If you want to have some other question, I will be very happy to answer those questions for you. So the, again, the number is one eight four four three zero one one two five zero. And you can call me on this number, and I will be happy to talk to you. So there is another phenomenon, which we call white coat phenomena. You know, you have seen the doctors wearing white coat, and uh, when I learned about this one, so I stopped wearing white coats because this is not the thing which I want to create for my patients. I want to create a confidence, not fear in their mind. So. What happens when the patient comes into the doctor's office, their blood pressure shoots up because of the nervousness or the stress or the tension. 20 years ago, some medical student did some experiment, and what they did, they inserted some probes into these patients and uh, noticed that when the doctor was checking the blood pressure, the blood pressure was 22 millimeter higher. Whoa. And when the nurse was checking, the blood pressure was lower. So same patient, when the doctor was checking, the blood pressure was more higher. When the nurse was checking, it was still higher, but less higher than the doctor. So I don't know, maybe people are more worried about about the doctor or what he's going to say, because nurse use, does not usually tell you what's going to happen with you. They are supportive staff. So maybe there was another interesting thing that uh, does not allow the blood pressure to go as high. And Around 30 minutes later, they are back to the normal. So this is called white coat phenomena. So that's why before we make the final diagnosis of hypertension, what I tell my patients, okay, guys, you can go and get it checked. If you don't have a cuff at home, get it checked by a fire station. Every fire station in the community area are very willing to check up your blood pressure. Uh, there are also cups available at drug stores, uh, many drug stores, many big uh, stores has those, and you can go and check it out. Uh, although sometimes there is an error to it, so you don't want to take that in number as a final number. But check it often, and once you check it out, and maybe bring your cup to the doctor's office and do a tally. So uh, get your doctor to check your blood pressure, and then ask him to check your blood pressure with your cuff and see if there is any difference there. So uh, you guys can call me if you need to talk to me at 844-301-1250. The, your body is your natural pharmacy. We make every damn drug on demand. And even you make antihypertensive drugs on demand. We will we'll go on chatting about it as we go on. Uh, so the blood pressure, we classify into primary or secondary, or we also call primary as essential hypertension. I don't know why we call it essential hypertension. I believe we don't know why we have that high blood pressure. That's why we call it essential hypertension. Probably 90 to 95% people has essential hypertension. So what that means, we don't know what's causing it. And then there's a secondary high blood pressure. If you are younger, uh, 
are you are above age 55, uh, chances of you having secondary hypertension is more because in younger patient, patient, patient should not have a high blood pressure. So there is something going on in the system. And uh, so when you have that secondary kind of look on you, uh, younger or older, older, you want to look at, say, okay, if the kidneys are right, if the blood vessels are right, sometimes there's a blood vessels are narrow going to the uh, kidneys. Uh, sometimes the heart has the issues. Basically, you know, you have to look at the endocrine system. You have to look at the heart, arteries, kidneys. And uh, sometimes in the, during the pregnancy, like uh, eclampsia or preeclampsia, the blood pressure goes up too. Uh, so we're going to take a short break here, and uh, uh, we will come back and we'll go on talking our, uh, the your body is a natural pharmacy, and we're talking about hypertension today. Are you looking for quality Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments for your chronic issues? We offer a holistic, wholesome approach to living with chronic diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. If you or someone you know is diagnosed with cancer and is interested in adjunctive holistic approach, please come and meet our doctors at Ayurvedic and Naturopathic Medical Clinic or call us at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. Tune in Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the Your Body Is Your Pharmacy radio show. Hear from the doctors that were among the first in the U.S. to merge the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda and natural medicines with the advances of modern medical science. Listen to pioneer doctors Varender Sodi, Shalender, and Anju Sodi to keep up with some of the latest medical advances and learn from some of the true leaders of Ayurvedic medicines every Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. with the Your Body Is Your Pharmacy radio show on Desi 1250 AM, radio that listens to you. Panch Karma Detox Treatments are a great way to utilize natural healing mechanisms of the body. Our clinic in Bellevue, Washington offers over 36 years experience in Ayurvedic treatment. Call us for more information about our Panch Karma treatments at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. If you're suffering with diabetes, heart disease, hormonal issues, digestive issues, and other chronic health issues, we offer comprehensive Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments to reverse your diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. So, guys, you know, we had some technical issue in our phone system here, and uh, there was a static, so the staff called me, and I have to restart the program from my cell phone. So thanks to the technology, but I'm not a technologist here. I'm a doctor, and uh, so uh, please bear with me. <laughs> we are back on the show. So, you know, this uh, high blood pressure is very expensive. We are spending around $50 billion each year on hypertension. And this cost is towards the treatment, towards the missed days. And also, high blood pressure is the sole cause of maximum cardiovascular diseases. So that means that once you have high blood pressure, chances of getting cardiovascular diseases increases many, many, many fold. So very important to keep your blood pressure within the normal limits. So now, what is the problem with hypertension? According to one statistics, only 45% patients who are on drug treatment have controlled blood pressure. Wow. That is scary. What that means is that 55% patients have uncontrolled blood pressure. So when you are in a prehypertensive state, like that means you know your blood pressure is between 121 to 150, your chances of increasing cardiovascular disease is increased twofold. Every 20 to 10 increase, 20 in systolic and 10 in diastolic, increase your risk of cardiovascular twofold more. So the more blood pressure, the more heart disease you get. So you can understand that why it's very important for us to keep blood pressure within the normal limits. So now let's talk about what causes blood pressure. So one of the things is, you know, I think why we call it essential because we don't know what the hell blood pressure is. And I have a very interesting story to tell you here. In Ayurvedic medicine, we have no disease described as hypertension. And then you can say, whoa, 
there was a no disease like hypertension described in ayurvedic medicine why is that the reason is in any primitive society where people had a low key stress there was no high blood pressure so we can see that the high blood pressure is the problem because of the today's lifestyle so we can see that the our lifestyle is the cause of high blood pressure so uh, so there are you know we can divide the cause of this hypertension to three major causes although i don't think this is the only way one can be is uh, sympathetic neural activity you know you get stressed out and your blood vessels get pumped up and uh, get stiffened and it causes to raise your blood pressure and then we call the renin angiotensin system which is a very huge system i'm not going to explain to you here it's a very medically oriented and uh, it may be kind of a lot of uh, too much information for you to absorb or understand but to give you a very nutshot of it basically what happens with this system sodium concentration rises and as the sodium concentration rises we have high blood pressure and it's a complex system going to the kidneys blah 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 coming to the heart blood vessels uh the blood vessels has a special system which we call endothelial so there is a small muscles in the blood vessels which is called endothelial system and that get cramped that get spasmed and when that gets spasmed the blood pressure increases then there are a lot of environmental factors uh genetic factors like if you have a parent or two parents with blood pressure uh, chances of getting hypertension increases smoking if you smoke you are making your blood vessels stiffen because all the plaque is going to gunk up your blood vessel and that is not going to be very helpful there are certain uh, uh, factors like low birth weight so if the child is born with a low weight his kidney mass his kidneys are not as big so what happens when this kid is growing into a big human his kidney is not able to keep up with the normal function of and they can have a high blood pressure so again these are all the things which can control smoking we can control we can't control our genes but we can control the low birth rate too if we have a good nutritious food for the mother and she is following all, all the good direction obesity another very controllable factor uh, is direct link basically what's going on now your blood vessel has a lot of fat to pass through and uh, the excessive amount of fat is putting pressure on the blood vessels diabetes diabetes has excessive sugar circulating in your body so when you have excessive sugar circulating in your body what that does that actually increases the thickness of the blood and also this excessive sugar in the body becomes a toxic to the blood vessels it is like a glass so if you have a broken glass and you throw in your blood vessels it is going to ruin your blood vessels that exactly what sugar does to your blood vessels so it's really bad for you to have excess amount of sugar and also what you're doing is your body is creating a insulin reaction because when excess amount of sugar goes into it the body releases insulin and insulin consumes the sugar and uh, but if it is excessive it's not going to consume the whole thing and insulin pushes that into glycogen and the glycogen gets stored in your liver and in your muscle now you have excessive circulating it can push so much of uh, sugar and that excessive is becoming toxic to the blood vessels and everything has a threshold there is a if you have a low that's a problem if you have a high has a problem too much fat in your system if you have excessive fat that is also causing thickness of your blood and again as you know with the fluid dynamics when you have a thick blood or thick fluid going through it needs more pumping it needs more uh, of a action from the body and that would be difficult for the body to pump keep pumping another interesting factor which is i think we are the one who has done to ourselves low vitamin d isn't that interesting low vitamin d has been shown in these studies to have a direct cause of hypertension so you know why i'm saying it that we are the one who did it when god gave us a birth we did not have this clothing on us i'm not asking you to get nude out there and and that uh, around in news but what we have done we have lessened our exposure to the sun and most of 
the people I test for vitamin D, their vitamins are six, vitamin D is four, 10. It was, I was surprised when I checked mine many years ago, it was four. And I have checked now more than 5,000 patients and hardly two patients has a normal vitamin D by their own. And uh, like my kids live in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, and they were just here for the vacation and I checked their vitamin D. They are not taking vitamin D thinking they have enough sun exposure there in Jacksonville, Florida. And so I checked my daughter-in-law had a 24, my son has a 29. So this is also on the low side. The bare minimum is 30. But if you want to get a protection, it can be around 40 to 60. So basically it is also dependent upon your race and your color too, because the more darker skin you need less or more lighter skin you need more. So you can see that vitamin D is so important that it even has blood pressure. And uh, so in a study which was done by American Heart Association, I don't see many studies like this coming out of American Heart Association, but this is interesting. When they gave 2000 IU of vitamin D, there was a significant reduction in blood pressure. How much was it? 10 in systolic, five in diastolic. So again, Remember, when we have a 20 to 10 increase, there's a double fold increase in cardiovascular. That means you're cutting that risk into half. So just putting 2,000 IU of vitamin D every day in your diet, you can cut down the heart, uh, sorry, the uh, hypertension and heart attack on top of that too. So let's, uh, we will come back and we keep our discussion going. And you can call me at 844-301-1250 if you have any questions. Uh, we will continue our discussion after this uh, commercial break. If you or someone you know is diagnosed with cancer and is interested in adjunctive holistic approach, please come and meet our doctors at Ayurvedic and Naturopathic Medical Clinic or call us at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. Panch Karma Detox Treatments are a great way to utilize natural healing mechanisms of the body. Our clinic in Bellevue, Washington offers over 36 years experience in Ayurvedic treatment. Call us for more information about our Panch Karma treatments at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. So you can see that just pennies a day with vitamin D can save you the problem with the hypertension and heart disease. Another favorite of a lot of us is alcohol. We all love our wine, red wine. Uh, we like our beer. Uh, some people like the martini and whiskeys and all those kind of stuff. So I dig into this and I'll say his alcohol has some problem into it. Yes, alcohol has a problem. It's a direct cardiotoxic. What that means is when you drink alcohol, an excess, especially in excessive amount, your heart becomes toxic with it. If your heart becomes toxic with it, it is going to cause more blood pressure. So there are interesting studies when people cut down the alcohol intake. Again, there was a drop of 10 in systolic and 5 in diastolic. Again, a little bit is going to go a long way here because your heart is pumping all the time. So guys, so make sure that you don't drink excessively. Uh, many doctors say 1.5 drink a day for a male and less than one a day for a female. My norms are not even that. I will say one to two times a week would be fine, one to two drinks, but not in every day. Because the study shows when the female drinks, especially females, they cannot metabolize alcohol very well, and they have chances of getting breast cancer double. Already we have a 12% breast cancer in this country. When you're taking one glass of wine a week for females, the chances of getting breast cancer doubles up. And that's not wonderful to have breast cancer. And I don't want any female out there who's listening to my program should ever have breast cancer. There are drugs which also increase your blood pressure. So one of the drugs which we all use over the counter is ibuprofen. All those are non-steroidal drugs. And there are many of them and uh, like Advil, Motrin, Aleve. Uh, so these are, you know, the main one which we use over the counter. Then there are prescription like Celebrax and Voltaren. Uh, so these are also, you know, the another forms of uh, non steroidal anti-inflammatory, and they also increases your blood pressure. And because what they do, they in- help increase 
sodium in your system, and when you have increased sodium, the blood pressure goes up. The another uh, drug which is very commonly used for almost every disease in the world, uh, which, which is called corticosteroids, or steroids for short. Uh, the drugs would be dexamethasone, betamethasone, prednisolone, hydrocortisone, and there are many other names for it. These are wonderful drugs, but the use should be short and sweet. They are an emergency kind of drug, but in many diseases like uh, uh, asthma or uh, rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or uh, colitis, we are giving these drugs on a long-term basis. So you can see what is causing because it causes a salt ret retention and also increases your blood sugar, also does a lot of other things, and you end up having into a big mess. The another very common drug commonly used is antidepressant, and especially tricyclic compounds. So the drug like Efactor, Valbutrin, and there are many other tricyclic antidepressants. These also increase your blood pressure. And uh, again, the another class of drug which we're using very heavily on our kids, which we are labeling them as ADD or ADHD, uh, and you know, a lot of people are drugging these kids with amphetamines, which is a legal prescription drug, and the name for them is like Adderall or Focalin or uh, Concerta and Ritalin, all those kind of names, which basically are amphetamines, different forms of amphetamines. And amphetamines are toxic. If you read the studies, it's one interesting study was that the amphetamine causes Parkinson's disease. It was very funny when you read this study. So the, they said, oh, but the prescription amphetamine does not have the same effect. I was surprised as well. How is that different? You know, the, the state amphetamine has the Parkinson's disease, so how is sparing the people who are on prescription? So you can see, uh, we may not see the results in younger age, but these people, these folks who are on Ritalin or Concerta, maybe later on in their life uh, will develop Parkinson's disease. So again, not for Parkinson, but also for the hypertension, uh, we need to be careful. And a uh, lot of times, you know, I see a lot of patients with ADD and ADHD. And if uh, I was be born in this era, I think I would have been labeled as ADD because I was a hyper kid myself. And my mother could not hold me. And But I think <laughs> thanks to my parents, they did not put me on these drugs because these drugs are very harmful for you. And uh, But what they encourage in me is doing exercise doing yoga, doing breathing exercise, doing gardening, going into the mother nature, uh, divert my attention from doing some into a very f focused kind of activities and uh, like uh, breathing yoga. And that has really helped me tremendously. Gardening was such a good, and I still do gardening. And that has, actually, I think, had brought me out of that kind of stuff. And uh, I'm, I'm a successful person. So these drugs, overall, will increase your blood pressure. Now, come to the treatment. So when it comes to the treatment, there are not many options we have. There are three options, basically, which we do. Uh, one we call the volume system. So think like a balloon. Uh, think like your heart is a balloon. Now, the more pressure you put in the balloon, the more it's going to have a pressure on the walls of the blood, blood vessels. So to reduce it, when you leak some blood, sorry, the uh, volume of that balloon, the, there is a less pressure. So for that, we use diuretics. And then there is a, we, we talked about the renin-angiotensin system. There is a lot of drugs which we'll talk about. And then there's sympathetic nervous system. So the drugs which we mainly use are calcium channel blockers, uh, diuretics, blockers, ACE inhibitors, uh, the ARBs, uh, which is... Uh, and there are lots of these drugs which you use. But all of these have tons of side effects. Like, for example, diuretic is the first line which we use and has lots of side effects. And one of them is the frequent urination. You know, when you are on diuretic, you're going, you're going to the bathroom. And many people are going to the bathroom at night. And when you don't get good sleep, your recovery reduces. So you're not helping your blood pressure to get normal. Many years ago, a patient came to me, and he is a very successful architect, and uh, he has a malignant hypertension, which is like your blood pressure is above 180 and 140 was his blood pressure when he came to me. 
and uh, he has been taking five blood pressure med pills to control. Uh, he had been all of, all of them diuretics. He was on ACE inhibitors, calcium channel blocker, and clonidine, which is another toxic drug for controlling blood pressure. And his blood pressure was still not controlled. So I'm taking a history, and I'm asking him, you know, what to do. And his diet is clean. He's eating lots of vegetables, lots of fruit, nuts and seeds. So wow. So I said maybe he's a stress because he's an architect and he's the architect for big building. Maybe that is the factor. But uh, he he said he exercises. Says, How much you exercise? One hour. Said, wow. You uh, you exercise one hour a day and you still have a high blood pressure, malignant hypertension. So then he asked, what time do you exercise? He says, I twelve. I said twelve in the noon. I said no, twelve at night. So what happens when you you are exercising twelve at night? You have not a deep sleep. You are stimulating the system. At that time, your system should be slowed down. Looks like we have a caller on the line, and uh, we keep our discussion going, and uh, we'll come back with the all different thing. Let's see who is on the line. Hi, this is Dr. Sardi. Yeah, this is Giordano Djokovic. Hey, Djokovic, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Yeah. That's wonderful. <laughs> I just, hey, listeners, just want to give you a little interesting background. Djokovic is a, you know, is my patient for many years, and he came to me with a high blood pressure. So, Djokovic, can you tell me what was the problem when you came to our clinic? My problem was yeah, with the blood, high blood pressure. I was taking medication. Uh-huh. You know, I was I was a little bit under stress. Yeah. And uh, and then you know, like uh, I said, we we was born in Croatia, Italy, that's Italian in Croatia. We like to have a glass of wine or more sometimes, you know. Yeah. In a daily basis, in a daily basis, you know. Yeah. And, and so do, you uh, know, do you know how many medication you were on when you came to my clinic for blood pressure? I don't. I don't remember exactly I now, but it was a little bit always on the high. Yeah, you know, so you, you will, I think you were on three medications for controlling blood pressure. This is many years, you know. Yes. And now, how, how old are yes. you? Yes. Many... I'm uh, 72 now. 72. So, you know, wonderful. Yes. So, uh, so, so what, what made the difference in you? You know, we took you off the drugs and... Uh, uh, yes. And, you know, what what was, in your word, what made that difference to get to the normal blood pressure? What you did to do that? With the, with the normal thing, I, once I, I, I met this friend and uh, they told me about Dr. Soda, about you. And so I started to come by you and and uh, I started to change my diet. According, yes. You know, I, I was listening to you while you were telling me. And then uh, even the alcohol, I, I completely stopped everything. I was smoking years ago, but 33 years ago, probably I stopped that thing, you know, no smoke. Yeah. But uh, the the stress when I was working is a, is a major thing, and maybe the alcohol together, you know. Yeah. And uh, and and a lot of bed, uh, maybe we used to eat different food. I start to change my diet completely. It's 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 all different now. <laughs> a lot of vegetable, a lot of vegetable and fruit. <laughs> That's, and that's, and I think I think that thing helped me a lot, and especially listen to you, and uh, you know it makes a big difference. Makes a big difference, you know. Yeah, that's wonderful. So you know, I I remember uh, you know we 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 checked your blood and uh, you had the yep. inflammation marker, which is a C-reactive protein, uh, cardiac yep. part that was very much elevated, yep. and we gave you some medicine and we talked about. Uh, Giordano, we need to change, uh, Jerkovic, we need to change your diet. We need to put more vegetables. So, you know, you were doing yeah. it, but you were not doing it 100%. You know, you're doing like a halfway there. So, the, yeah. it's funny, the number was dropping, but it was not dropping where I want to go. You know, so we will talk about okay. it again. And then, you know, yeah. tell me about your walking, because, you know, you are a regular walker now. and uh, that uh, has I'm walking, yeah. Every day, every day walking and doing half an hour exercise, if it's possible, yeah. Yeah, How that thing helps walk? a lot. How much? Uh, three miles. Every day, every day, three miles. That's wonderful. Yeah. Really great. And uh, so, you know, uh, and you're not taking pharmaceutical medicine for many years now, isn't it? Yeah, many years. That's why after I, I don't remember what year I stopped it. Yeah, exactly. But, so uh, you're 72. So looking at the statistics, 
as people get older, their blood pressure yep. keeps going yep. up. And you are beating the clock. You are actually getting younger because you're not taking yeah. any blood pressure pill. And your blood pressure... That, that's right. No more. No more. But you see, and even Dr. S- Dr. Sodi, when I when I stop uh, completely with the wine, and maybe used to have liquor sometimes too, 2011, from that time I lost, or read, uh, right away I lost 25 pounds. Yeah. You know. And I have more more energy. I have more more uh, energy to do. You know, to, I work part time now a little bit, and and I'm I'm happy. You know, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah, very happy. You know, Jerkovic, you know, you used to work for a company which makes some Boeing parts, isn't it? You were. Uh, yes, I still do. I still do something. You still yeah. do that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, and <laughs> the oil companies, machines, you make those big rigs stuff. So you had a really very Before, yeah. interesting job. You know, so. And has needs yeah, to have a yeah. good precision, and uh, so I think you uh, you have been doing a remarkable job for the society to provide such a wonderful machines, and uh, you know yeah. and that has to be wonderfully good. So one thing you know, I, I remember one time you know we we will because you're Italian and you love your wine, and uh, so we had a talk. Yes. Said, Dr. Sodi, can you have one glass of wine a day? I said, <laughs> you know, Jerkovic, you can, but I don't know if the blood pressure is going to hold. So what happened, you will have yeah. a, one glass of wine and your blood pressure was still going up. And then I said, yeah. no, let's stop it completely. And when you stopped it, it, your blood pressure became a history after that. It's just like a completely yes. turn around and you didn't need any Completely damage. changed. Completely yeah. changed. So yeah. wonderful. You know, see that I think I really want to thank you for coming on the show and uh, talking to us because you had done you a will. remarkable job for yourself. You are a wonderful inspiration for a lot of people yeah. out there. And, you know, like, and I, I'm not against yeah. drug treatment. You know, it's, they, they, are, they have a value. But if you can go yeah. without the drug treatment, that is the best for you, isn't it? I know. You know, I keep, Dr. Soli, I keep telling this younger generation, younger people, because they're going out and they, they drink until they pass out. I said, listen to me. You know, I was drinking all my life, but, but, but there is a moderation. And that's, that's, I know when, when the people are young, but they think, you know, they're getting old. I'm talking to the older people, you know, 60, 59, 60. Oh, then because they ask me, oh, what time, what uh, what year you stop? How old you are when you stop drinking completely? So I tell yeah. him what year was sixty-seven, I think. I don't remember. So oh, I still got ten years. No, don't wait those, that long. It's going to be too late. Might be too late. I know. Yes, you know exactly. You know there is. You know the amazing thing is the body heals, but if you push it too yeah. far away, it cannot heal. Then after that, so we all no more. Yeah, our body. And uh, I am so proud of you, Jerkovic. You have done a remarkable job with yourself Thank and what you. was very interesting for me but why I wanted you to talk to you on the on the radio program here Thank you. because you know you yeah. you are 72 and you beat it you know you have you have been drug free for so many years now on top of it and right. looking at the right. statistics people get older they have to add blood pressure pills and you have complete opposite you are off the pills and you're doing remarkably good i really want to yeah. thank you on coming on the show and uh, do you have anything which you want to tell to my listeners what they should do to be stay healthier? What, what, do you, what is your routine these days? Tell me about your routine. My opinion? Yeah, your routine. Yeah. What, what do you do? What do you do in, in your daytime right now? What, is your, what do you eat? What in my daytime. Uh, yeah, what do you sleep? What time you, know, you sleep and how much hours of sleep you get? So people can get some idea what you have done to make this big change in you. The big change, I think, for me was uh, uh, the food yeah. and then the alcohol, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So what the time food and the alcohol. Sleep? What time you go to sleep? Excuse me? What time do oh, you go to bed to sleep? 10, 10 o'clock, about 10 o'clock. Good. Some, and what time yeah. do you uh, Depends. Uh, sometimes 5, sometimes 6. Yeah, so you get seven eight uh, hours of sleep. Yeah, so that's very essential because sleep is most essential for having blood pressure normalized. So thank you very yes. much for coming on the show. I really, I know you've been very busy today. You've been helping the yeah, yeah, because, show there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you very much for coming.
Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye bye. So you can you can see that uh, Jerukovic, you know, even at the age of seventy two, had reversed his blood pressure. And his blood pressure was constantly high. He was on three drugs uh, for controlling blood pressure, but still high. And uh, but with the lifestyle changes, you know, not only one thing will make a difference. It has to be nutrition because the food is our fuel. If you put a wrong kind of fuel in your system, your fuel is not going to make you healthier. The wrong fuel is not going to make you healthier. Exercise is very important. See, Djokovic walks three miles every day. He does also the breathing exercise. He didn't tell you that one. And he has changed the diet, and he has stopped taking alcohol. And I think he may have once in a blue moon, uh, uh, you know, wine here and there. But, again, it should not be at the expense of your health. A lot of times I see I saw a patient uh, a few years ago, and he has a uh, alcohol alcoholism, and uh, he stopped drinking. And now what he did, he started picking up drinking Pepsi two liters a day. And his triglycerides was in thousands. And I told him, so you know, this is the very garbage which you're drinking. He said, you know, now I have to give up that too because I gave up alcohol. So you cannot have that kind of attitude because, you know, this is for your health. The body is your temple. Body is your everything. And if you are want to keep your body healthy, you have to follow the simple laws of Mother Nature. So we'll be back after a short commercial break here. You guys can call me if you have a question at 844-301-1250. Thank you. We'll be back. Are you looking for quality Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments for your chronic issues? We offer a holistic, wholesome approach to living with chronic diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. If you're suffering with diabetes, heart disease, hormonal issues, digestive issues, and other chronic health issues, we offer comprehensive Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments to reverse your diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. So I think I kind of lost the count here. We were at the drugs. Uh, we were talking about calcium channel blockers, diuretic, acinipters, beta blockers. So these drugs, you know, they are good to control blood pressure, but they also have a side effect. For example, beta blocker or diuretics, you know. Diuretics, uh, one of the biggest problem is, you know, it causes frequent urination. It also causes the uh, imbalance in the electrolytes. So your ratios of potassium and sodium and uh, minerals changes, and we get a, into a bigger problem with that one. And uh, the potassium... Uh, is the biggest loser when we have a diuretic, especially uh, not the loop, di uh, the, the loop diuretics, yes, will do, like Lasix will do it, uh, Bumex will do it, and uh, uh, the thiazide kind of diuretics will do it too. So that also causes some problem. There are also potassium sparing diuretics like uh, uh, aldactan, which is given for uh, blood pressure too, uh, can be given. But uh, once you have that, you may have to substitute with potassium. Uh, again, the beta blockers, you know, which is given to uh, dilate the blood vessels, that's the mechanism how it actually lowers the blood pressure, but it also blocks the beta cells in the body. And one of the biggest organ, beta cell organ in the body is your pancreas. So when you're blocking your pancreas, over time, you are going to get diabetes. So now thank you. You know, we are trying to lower the blood pressure, but we're also blocking the beta cells which makes your insulin also. And uh, so over time, we are going to get diabetic. So I'm not talking about, you know, once a month or twice a month kind of use, but you're using regularly for hypertension. When you use these drugs, you're using regularly. You are going to have these side effects. So again, I'm not against using this drug treatment, but if your body can do it for you, that is the best method how you can control your blood pressure. So let's, let's talk about what we can do, what is the natural remedies out there to help your blood pressure. The one thing is special is your food. And just look at your food, what you're eating. If you're eating a lot of soda, alcohol, uh, sugar, salt. So the average consumption of salt should be around 6 grams of salt, which will give us around 2.2 milligrams of uh, uh, 
the uh, so, so the, uh, the sodium, and uh, so it should not be more than that in a day. But uh, you know, I said, oh, that's enough salt for us. But when you're consuming a full bag of potato chips, or full bag of corn chips, or full bag of uh, the um, popcorns, there is so much salt in them, and that is also a problem. When you're consuming a one can of uh, soda, like Coca-Cola. It has up to 8 to 10 teaspoons of sugar, also has a lot of sodium in it, has a salt in it. And try to put 8 to 10 glass, uh, sorry, cup, uh, the teaspoon of sugar in a one cup of uh, tea, you will say, oh, my God, it's too sweet. But when you put salt on it, you don't feel that too salty. And that's why it gets so addictive. People go on drinking it, and which is not the best thing for you. And so you need to look at it. Fried food, uh, oxidized food, all those you know, when you barbecue, when you deep fry the food, uh, when you're grilling it, those foods are becoming oxidized. Now your body has to work extra hard to clean it out. And then they get, they start plugging your blood vessels. When the blood vessels are plugged up, the endothelial cells, the small muscles in, the, in the, your blood vessels start to be not very active, not very perfect, and it start modifying them, and which we call remodeling of endothelial system. When you remodel your endothelial system, you are creating a problem for yourself and you're going to have a more high blood pressure. So the diet is very important. What kind of food it will be good? So there is an interesting study uh, available on potassium-rich food, although uh, if you substitute potassium, like a, the synthetic potassium, it does not do the same thing. But if you put people on a whole vegetarian and whole grain diet, a uh, lot of green vegetables. And my average is around four to six cups of vegetables a day. That's at least minimum for almost everybody out there. And uh, that adds on to a good amount of potassium, minerals, magnesium, your calcium, folates, uh, which is the folic acid form of, natural form of folic acid, B vitamins, and other vitamins and your body is going to love it, and you're going to have a wonderful results with it. Stop smoking. Smoking is not the best thing. It directly affects your endothelial function of the blood vessels. So your blood vessels are not becoming as they get stiffened, and stiffened blood vessels are not the best one for you. Another thing which you can do, which is important for you, is magnesium. Magnesium is kind of a very forgotten or overlooked mineral. There is around more than 300 processes in the body where magnesium is utilized. And uh, so interesting thing is like, you know, you talk to people, say, okay, I need my potassium. So, okay, I can have banana. I need my calcium for my bone. Uh, but nobody talks about magnesium. And magnesium in some way is more important than potassium and calcium because it's such an important nutrient for overall whole body. So you can have a potassium-rich, uh, sorry, the magnesium-rich food, which are like beans. Uh, a lot of my patients, you know, it's uh, strange to see, they don't eat beans. And in the mother nature, there is around 700 different beans available. So if you start using one bean a day, it will take around two years for you to come back to the bean one you start using. Uh, but even if you focus on seven or eight beans, like chickpeas or kidney beans, or lima beans, soya bean, mung bean. There is a black bean. And there is a, you know, black-eyed peas, you know, lentils. These all are very rich source of magnesium. Whole grains. Again, whole grains mean they have not been stripped off the nutrition. They have the skin on them, and that skin has a fiber in it. And that fiber is so important. And plus the whole grains has almost everything which the mother nature has packed for you. And the more refined, the more white flour we eat, the more problematic. And again, in our culture, and at least it's become global now, uh, I remember as a young kid, we used to eat different grains in different seasons. So because there was a storage issue, there was a, uh, the, uh, the production issue, so the wheat was available for so many months. And then after that, it will be rice. Then after that, it will be corn. It will be buckwheat. It will be amaranth. It will be different grains. So we grew up eating different grains, and that's how you should be eating different grains, not just single. So most of our society eats 
wheat. And again, the problem with the wheat is it's not the same wheat which we have eaten in the last uh, 50 years. It has completely genetically changed and have been heavily pesticized, a lot of uh, roundup on it, and that end up causing a lot of issues. If you eat the wheat or any food, you should eat organic because organic food are free of chemicals and uh, also should be not non-GMO because what the GMO does it, it also has the effect on our DNA behavior and the DNA is the one which actually makes our body or, or breaks our body. Nuts and seeds like almonds, Brazil nuts, seeds, flax seeds, sesame, sunflower, uh, cocoa powder, dark chocolate, they all are rich source of magnesium. And uh, you can, you know, I'm a great fan of uh, getting my nutrition for my food. So if you eat a variety of these things, you may not need to add substitution. But you can also add substitution. Magnesium is not very expensive. It's not toxic either. So you can consume around 300 milligrams to 500 milligrams of magnesium, and there are different forms of magnesium available. There's the magnesium citrate, magnesium malate, magnesium oxide. Certain forms are absorbed more quickly. Certain forms are not absorbed very quickly. The most I like magnesium malate, which is more bioavailable. Magnesium glycinate, which is also very bioavailable. Magnesium citrate is also bioavailable, but not as much as uh, magnesium malate. So uh, you can ask your doctor to see what is the best form of magnesium you need to take. Okay, so we're going to come back. We're going to continue the discussion, what you can do, what is the best method, what herbs you can use, what yoga you need to do, what kind of meditation you need to do to bring your blood pressure back to the normal after the, this uh, commercial ad. If you or someone you know is diagnosed with cancer and is interested in adjunctive holistic approach, please come and meet our doctors at Ayurvedic and Naturopathic Medical Clinic or call us at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. Panch Karma Detox Treatments are a great way to utilize natural healing mechanisms of the body. Our clinic in Bellevue, Washington offers over 36 years experience in Ayurvedic treatment. Call us for more information about our Panch Karma Treatments at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. So folks, uh, again, we are on the nutrition part to how to control your blood pressure. So there is a there is a study done which is called Dietary Approach to Stop Hypertension or commonly called a DASH, D-A-S-H, Dietary Approach to Stop Hypertension. So in that, what they did, they cut down the salt intake. They cut down, uh, they cut down the sugar. And they also added whole grain fruits and vegetables. And what they saw, there was a, a drop in the uh, systolic and diastolic blood pressure, around uh, uh, 10 close to 10 in systolic and 5 in diastolic. So again, every bit of this uh, lowering in blood pressure makes a difference. So look at that one. So that's one. You can change your diet, and that will start bringing your blood pressure down. But how about yoga or exercise? Or like like a Jerovic, he start to walk, you know, three miles a day. So there are tons of data available. Again, it brings your blood pressure around 5 to 10 points of on the systolic on 10 and uh, five on the diastolic with the walking, just walking. And walking is the most natural form of exercise that the mother nature has provided to us. So, you know, a lot of times I see patients who just love to run. And uh, so I kind of uh, laugh at it because we are not designed to be runners. We, have you seen that skinny legs like a deer uh, who, who are, <laughs> And are designed to be running for running. Uh, we are not designed for like a runner, runner. And when we run, we are also kicking our sympathetic system. When we kick our sympathetic system, the blood pressure goes up. And uh, I don't know if you ever remember, there was a very famous study done by Dr. Dean Arnish, who was the first cardiologist to prove that the diet and yoga and lifestyle changes can reverse the heart disease. And his first trial where he took 13 patients and the 12 survived and reversed the heart disease. One patient died, and he was an attorney by profession. So, you know, you can see he was under a lot of stress, and he was also in divorce situation, and he was also a runner. And he was the one who died in the study because he was running. He didn't listen to the Dr. Dean on. He said, do yoga, do walking, do meditation. He ran. 
So running, not the best one for high blood pressure. Walking is. You can do rhythmic walking. You can do interval walking. You can go higher speed. Uh, higher speed, maybe 4.5 to 5 miles per